yesterday we spent uh, about four or five hours going through the Eastern Washington uh, video and, and uh, talking about the corrections that uh, we need to make and, and be able to move forward pretty quickly. And we turned the page yesterday afternoon and uh, on to a, a really big challenge going to the University of Iowa, a place that I'm familiar with and have so much respect for Coach Ferentz and, and the program that he's built there for uh, so many years, and, and so it'll be a, a daunting task that uh, we have to come up with great game plans. Our kids have to play exceptional football for us to have an opportunity to to compete and be successful. Um, and um, uh, make no mistake, I think this is the best, since I've been here in the five years, this is the most complete team uh, that uh, the Bison will face. So with that, we'll open up for questions. How you come out of Eastern Washington? So you may have an update on injury status for the game on Saturday. Yeah, I, I don't until uh, tonight uh, when we get out to our first practice. But um, you know, there's a, some guys that are pretty banged up that we'll find out through today and tomorrow how much those guys can practice. But uh, I'll, I'll know probably more. If not tonight, I'll know more tomorrow. As far as pass defense, is that something that you guys are going to look at schematically? Or can that be cleaned up with technique? A little bit of both. Um, some of it was technique, some of it was uh, the rhythm and tempo that those guys, how fast they were going uh, with their plays. Some of it was some backups that we had in there that didn't know quite maybe what the um, coverage was compared to some of the older guys. But uh, um, we need to shore that up and, and more, more we need to shore up the scramble issues that we had. You mentioned on Saturday you had extremely tough first two games of the season going into this Iowa game and, and kind of the, the exhaustion level that might be yeah. there. But how much have those games prepared you just in being able to see the intelligence of your football team and, and the, the level of, of comprehension that you have out there? Well, I think the guys that have played, you hope playing two games that those guys will learn a lot and, and maybe not make the same mistakes. I think the, uh, the downfall, the negative part of having the two great competitive games is we didn't get a chance to see some of the depth and and that's obviously something that we're going to need uh, as we get into to valley play as the season goes along and that's something that we're a little bit nervous about is we've played x amount of guys on defense and x amount of guys on offense and and probably not going to change a whole lot this week um, and we'll hopefully get a couple more guys playing but uh it's tough when you have a tough non-conference and you're trying to find ways to win games because it's so important uh, to win those interconference battles uh, to make sure that for whatever it is long term that uh, you have those W's under your belt that uh, it probably affected us in the fact of developing depth. How much of a boost does Austin Cooner give you guys now that he's back in? Well, he, uh, I think, supplies us with so much versatility because he'll play center and he'll play guard. and. Um, which spot he starts at, which spot he finishes at, we'll figure that out this week. But I think it'll it'll uh, maybe give some plays off to to maybe Tanner, who's done a phenomenal job. Tanner Volson's played two really good football games. Probably give a few plays off to either either Jack or, or Zach inside, um, so that we can be you know maybe a little bit more fresh uh, as the second half goes on. Coach, you mentioned Iowa's probably as solid as a team you've seen. How about Bethard? Where does he rank? Well, I haven't seen him, you know, first up and close, but I know he's a real um, heady kid, real cerebral, really good athlete, makes all the throws, uh, knows their system inside and out, and uh, he doesn't make the the mistakes. You know, that's the one thing you, you notice is they, it's a typical Coach Ferentz, Coach team. They're, they're not going to beat themselves. And, and uh, so with that being said, we have to eliminate uh, some of the mistakes that we've made to give ourselves a great chance. But Beathard's a, an exceptional football player. Coach, how do you think uh, Easton played Saturday? I, I thought he, I thought he played really well. I was so pleased with Easton, and and uh, I think he grew up a little bit uh, on Saturday under some adverse conditions and and things that that uh, were going wrong, uh, getting us into a lot of um, really uh, long yard situations where he was able to to bail us out a few times. I thought the two minute drive. To get us the field goal, he played exceptionally well. There was probably one throw that he wishes he had back, um, ended up being an incompletion. But uh, uh, he managed the game, he managed the clock, and I thought he showed great leadership out there. Do you bring up the win streak at all against FBS teams as you prepare for this? Don't even know what it is. Chris, the penalties, penalty yards, is that something? 
flow of the game that just happened, or is that you got? Well, we have to clean up penalties, no question. There's some penalties that are aggressive penalties that are going to be called based on whatever happens, uh, and then there's other penalties that um, we have to do a better job of, without without a doubt. Um, but I, I know this: we don't win five national championships. Uh, without the same blocking scheme we, we did on Saturday. And I'll just say that, that I think we're blocking the same way. It's just maybe a subjective, how you want to see it. Is it is it a chop block? Is it not? And um, and we haven't received any word back from from the office on if they were or they weren't. And if they, if they were deemed that they were, then we have to do a better job of making sure that uh, we get our head across or get into the 10 and two position and um, if they're not, we're going to keep doing what we're doing because it's been successful for the five years that I've been here and, and even to the fact of we had one called against us and I didn't think it was a chop block either. Coach, this year the wide receiver, you had Cup. Where's Matt Vandenberg right yeah, when did boy, he have the line too? Well, he's, a, he's an exceptional receiver, just probably in a different manner eh? they, because they're, they're running the ball to set up a lot of their play action as opposed to everybody that's – uh, or the people that just are throwing it to, to spin it around 50 times a game. But uh, um, he's been doing it for a while, too, and, and been doing it against high-level competition. And I've uh, been really impressed with, uh, as, as I watch him, how, uh, how under control his body is, how fast he is, how he goes up and gets the football in a lot of those 50-50 situations. And uh, he's an ex exceptional player. It was the, the option and then the spread. And is this a little bit easier to prepare for with Iowa mirroring some of the things that NDSU does offensively? That makes it a little bit more manageable in the fact that uh, uh, you could almost go against our offense and call some of the same plays, and at least we know where our fits are at and we know where some of the plays may, may go. Now the personnel is a different animal. This the, These guys up front are – a lot better than what Eastern Washington or Charleston Southern take nothing away from those two uh, programs, but this is a Big Ten offensive line and tight ends and, and fullbacks that uh, been doing this system for an awful long time uh, and uh, are extremely sound in what they're doing in the blocking schemes. So it's the most complete team the Bison have faced. Is that speed, strength? I mean, can you get a little more? Specific? It's probably everything, and I'd say the physicality of what we're going to face is what really kind of makes us a little um, leery to see how well we're going to match up. Um, you know, a lot of teams come in here saying, well, can we match up with, with NDSU uh, physicality-wise? Well, we're going into a Big Ten game uh, that isn't a spread Big Ten offense, that is a under center, uh, eliminate the quarterback run game. You know, you're not getting all the things that, that uh, other teams are showing you from a quarterback run game. It's here, we're going to line up and we're going to run right at you and we're going to knock you off the football and can you hold up? And uh, the first two opponents that they've played have not held up. Uh, and, and so that's alarming to us because they're playing, you know, decent football teams that, that can't hold up. So how, how are we going to be able to hold up uh, with our front seven? We just given, gosh, another over to you guys were on the field a long time on Saturday, a lot of nicks and bruises, and then, you know, travel day as well. Well, take care of your body. You know, get your rest, uh, eat right, and um, get yourself in the training room, do all the things you need to do. But in the same respect, we are still seeing this long term and saying, we have three weeks to improve as a football team. Uh, this game is a big challenge. Plus, we have an open week. And then we get into our conference play. So some some players need to emerge. Some some players that are playing OK need to play a little bit better. Some players that we haven't had to utilize yet are going to have to be able to step up because over the next three weeks, we have to find some more depth. It may be a lot of practice reps for them and maybe limited game reps or more special teams reps. But we have to improve as a football team not just this week, but over the next three weeks before we get into the heavy league play where we're going to have eight in a row. And we know that uh, um, you're not going to feel great come Monday and Tuesday after those games. Can you tell us what you've seen out of Lance Dunn in the first two weeks and how he fits into this offense for you guys? Well, he's so much more confident this year uh, in in seeing the holes and, in, and uh, understanding what his keys and reads are. Coach P's done a phenomenal job of, of making sure Lance knows exactly what he's looking at pre-snap as well as post-snap when he's getting the football and, and he's hitting the hole extremely hard. And uh, I've been really, really pleased with uh, 
uh, how Lance is running the football. And, and this is a big game for Lance. He's going to go back home and uh, be an hour and 15 minutes from, from his family, and I know he's excited about the challenge. Is there any benefit to having this week three of the season, or is that more of a detriment that you don't have this earlier in the season? I think you could probably make a pro and a con for both. So it, it's when it's laid out on the schedule, and, and we're going to go play it. Did Iowa look at Lance? Do you know? I couldn't. I, I did help recruit Lance, but uh, I, I don't believe so. But I, I don't. I don't remember. How often do you see them then in the recruiting trail? Talking about Iowa in general. Oh, we see Iowa a lot when we're in the state of Iowa, when we're in Wisconsin, um, when we're in Nebraska. You know, you, they have South Dakota. They have guys from our region scattered throughout. They have some Kansas City kids that we've run into and. Uh, um, so all over the place, we, we definitely run into them, and they do a, they do a great job. I think they recruit uh, pretty similar to how we recruit as far as find somebody that fits their system and find somebody that fits their profile uh, of character and toughness and, and work ethic and, and plug them in uh, and let them develop. You don't see a lot of transfers or JC guys probably on their roster. Where does Desmond King rank as guy, for guys that you've had to prep for him? And what does he make you guys do as a coach? Well, he's he's an elite corner without without a doubt, and uh, I you know I to me he reminds me a lot of Marcus, you know, and that and maybe you say, well, that's maybe not saying Desmond King's not very good. Well, Marcus Williams is a pretty good NFL corner. Let's let's not uh, undersell Marcus. Unbelievable ball skills, um, similar to Marcus. Unbelievable instincts of of being able to see things before they happen. And that's where Marcus, I thought, was so exceptional. He sees the split of a receiver. He knows what could be coming. He sees um, you know, uh, the route as it starts to develop, and he's able to jump some things. I, I'm so impressed with him. He's always around the football. And if he is around the football, he finds a way to come down with it. His team played on New Year's Day in the Rose Bowl. When did you start watching tape on these guys? Well, I didn't start watching tape until the spring and summer. But uh, make no mistake, I'm a kid growing up in Iowa, and I was rooting for the Hawks on, on Rose Bowl, and, and um, uh, that was a tough game for them, and they'd be the first to admit it. But uh, uh, that can't take away from the incredible season that that, that that team had. And you can tell to start off this season uh, two things, how much confidence these guys are, are playing with because of the success that they had. And they're playing with a chip on their shoulder uh, that – you know, okay, we didn't play well in, to end the season, but um, we're going to try to get back to that same stage they were at uh, this past year. And I don't see a reason why they're not favored to win every game the rest of the season that they play because I, I don't know how their schedule lays out, but in that Big Ten side that they're on, um, I think they're the best team. Is that your team growing up? You know, you want to be a Hawk? I think everybody that was on East, in Eastern Iowa probably wanted to be a Hawk, Jeff. And and uh, I, when I was growing up, uh, uh, Hayden Fry was the head football coach, and, and it was uh, it was pretty cool. I remember as a kid going to Iowa football camps and and uh, running into assistants Dan McCarney, Barry Alvarez, Bill Schneider, Bob Stoops, uh, and Kirk Ferentz, and those guys were on the staff. That's a that's a pretty potent group of coaches that went on to have pretty good success and uh, I learned a lot from him as, as a young player. Coach Kinnick Stadium, at the end of the day, I get it's just another field, but is there ex extra excitement to get into an atmosphere like that? I think it'll help us. Uh, moving on to other games that we're going to play uh, this year, that uh, it'll be a great environment for our players. It'll be something that they're going to remember for an awful long time. It's very similar to our place in that the, at the fans are right on top of you. And there's not a lot of movement or room behind the benches. And that's something that uh, is, I think, the best thing about college football is when you have the benches and then there's fans right there. You know, when you have tracks and a lot of space between it, uh, uh, the fans can be away from you. But this is a, uh, a great venue to play in. And uh, I know our guys are going to be really excited about the opportunity. Do you see the growth in your defensive backs that you wanted to see out of the Eastern Washington game? Well, I hope we learned a lot more than anything. You know, you learn from – you know, making mistakes. You, you learn from um, going against good people, and, and that's what I want to do. Is I just want to continue to learn. We're going to continue to grow throughout the whole season. I mean, you, you hope we play better pass defense, but but I also know what we did last year early on the season compared to late in the season from a pass defense standpoint. We've got a phenomenal defensive back coach in Joe Klanerman, and uh, and I know our guys are going to continue to improve on a week to week basis. 
more than anything, we just need to learn from our mistakes. The numbers actually got worse for the past defense, oddly enough, as it sounds, when Cup went down. Did you guys have kind of a specific plan for Cup that got thrown by the wayside when he got injured? Um, we had a plan for Cup, absolutely, and I think it probably took their quarterback and said, great, I'm going to spread around to five guys as opposed to having my first read of being Cup, in which whether we were trying to take him away or not, you just can't take that kid totally away. But uh, uh, I, I think they probably settled into more reading their progressions and, and uh, hurt us on some stuff. But, you know, we're, once again, let's, let's, we'll move from that game and talk about Iowa and we'll um, make our corrections. Call oh, Gene, you know, hey, buddy old pal, can you help me out? <laughs> I don't know what he's going to help me out with, but uh, uh, <laughs> we'll be interested to see. Will he have an NDSU shirt on underneath his Hawk shirt? I know he won't, but uh, it'll, it'll be good to see Gene. It'll be good for me to see Gary Barta as well. I was on the staff at, at, at UNI um, when he was an associate athletic director and have a great amount of respect for Gary as well. Chris, is this game good for college football? Because the Big Ten says it's not. No, I think it's great for college football, and, and I, don't, I don't care what the end result is. It's great for our guys to have the opportunity to play. It's great for Illinois State to have an opportunity to go to Northwestern or Northern Iowa to go to Iowa or any, Indiana State to go to Minnesota. Those things are so valuable from, from a finance part of it for starters to be able to, to generate revenue for your program and, most importantly, have your fan base and have your families be able to go to those games, and that's what I'm going to miss. That's the thing that, that uh, I think gets lost a little bit is we have some great games down the line uh, to go to Oregon and Colorado, but I know if I'm a family that is maybe doesn't have all the means that, that somebody else does, I can get to Iowa City. I can get to Minneapolis or wherever it may be, and those are the things that were aims where we're, we're still going to recruit regionally. And I wish we could play those FBS games regionally so that uh, uh, the, the families of our players um, can get there. And I, I know our fans are going to get there, but uh, uh, I look at it from our families as well. Can those some of those players' uh, parents get to a game? I know you're busy preparing for Iowa, but did you sneak a few peeks at Carson's game yesterday? I saw the highlights, and I was either meeting with the offense or meeting with the defense throughout that three hours and heard the hooting and hollering outside the room. But um, did it really surprise any of you? Because it, it sure as heck didn't surprise me um, because I've seen the guy do this for uh, a long time, uh, for five years. And if, you see, if he sees a single high safety look, he's going to burn you uh, on an outside fade. And he did that. And uh, uh, you know, like I told you guys, I think last week, the stage was not going to be too big for that guy and uh, couldn't be happier for him. Coach, Andrews, any thoughts about maybe pulling some red shirts off some guys? No, we're, we're, we're not going to do that right now. We're going to go with the guys that we have. Chris, you get a lot of ticket requests uh, for family. To, yeah. Is that <laughs> hard to balance? It's really hard to balance. And uh, the guy behind you has got to do a great job of doing that for me. So uh, Brian Gordon will help me with that. and. Uh, but no, it's great too. Uh, you know, for myself and for for Matt Ince, who's from Waterloo uh, and grew up there and, and spent so much time in the state, um, we have a lot of requests coming in, and uh, I hope I wish I could get them all there. But uh, um, and some of the requests I have probably would wear black and gold even. So um, uh, I'll get my my immediate family and some of my my closest friends will be there for sure.